Hey everybody, welcome to episode number two of season two. That's actually episode 12 of the Jesus Taxi Show. I've got some friends here in the car. We're in Albuquerque, New Mexico, and we're going to be talking about the audio Bible. I did a thing on the solar Bible years ago. But stick around for the next 30 minutes for the Jesus Taxi. Hey everybody, welcome to the Jesus Taxi. I'm Wayne Hansen. I'm with some good friends here from Albuquerque and a ministry that's called Faith Comes By Hearing. And uh, it's so great. I got Daniel and David in the, in the taxi today. Hey Daniel and David, so glad you're joining us. We had a little overheating problem and so we're getting to record this twice, but that's okay. We're, we're gonna do it together and we're gonna talk about Jesus. We're gonna talk about the Bible and talk about the ministry of faith comes by keep hearing. Right. So, right. um, to the right? Oh, keep going straight. Oh, go straight, okay. That's <laughs> our next flight. Good, next so, and I'm also driving a car, so that's the other tricky part. But uh, tell me, Daniel, what's your role at Faith Comes By Hearing? Yeah, so I am uh, the Digital Marketing Project Manager. So I work with uh, the marketing department, marketing and communications. Uh, we've got about 15 uh, very talented people on our team. Uh, so I uh, just make sure that uh, the digital um, aspects of our marketing projects and, and uh, campaigns are running uh, smoothly to help, uh, help coordinate with our uh, graphic designer, our videographers, our writer, and then our uh, social media specialists to make sure that all the moving parts uh, ultimately culminate in, in a finished product. And, yeah. uh, and also work uh, closely with our uh, manager of the department, uh, Lori, who uh, just makes sure that uh, we are telling the story of our organization in a way that is uh, accurate and uh, just well done. So that's awesome. And we are driving around in Eastern Albuquerque, mm -hmm. right? Yep. So if you watch Walter White yes. and Breaking Bad, you know, all that stuff was filmed around here somewhere, right? Oh, to the right? Straight. Straight? <laughs> okay. You keep freaking me out on which way I'm know. going. <laughs> Trying to throw you off, yeah. That's right. Well, I was good. I'm still on my game. I'm still here, everybody. I'll get you. Still working. And we have to keep, we'll keep shading this phone so it doesn't overheat. But yeah, I want to show you a quick video from Faith Comes By Hearing. It's called Vision 33. Check it out. He made from one man every nation of mankind to live on all the face of the earth having determined allotted periods and boundaries of their dwelling place, that they should seek God. And perhaps feel their way toward him and find him. Yet he is not far from each one of us. Earth's population numbers in the billions and continues to grow. There are over 7,000 languages spoken around the world. 70% of all humanity live in oral communities, and 50% cannot read at a functional level. Christ tells us that his gospel will be proclaimed throughout the entire world as a testimony to all nations before the end. But how? Alone, the monumental task of delivering God's word in the heart language of every people group on earth would not be possible. But we are not alone. Faith Comes By Hearing has partnered with the worldwide translation community in a movement to finish the task and ensure that everyone on earth has access to God's word in a format they can understand by the year 2033. We're committed to doing our part by recording scripture and creating listening programs for oral communities around the world. After two millennia, in an unprecedented time of unity within the body of Christ, we can finally see the Great Commission fulfilled in our generation. This movement cannot be stopped, and there is an opportunity for each one of us to be a part of it. This is it, the final sprint. Join the movement. Vision 2033. 
Vision 2033. I know we're going to talk a little bit about the goals of that and the numbers of that, but uh, yeah, tell me about you know where you where we're at and where we're going. What are some of the big numbers there, Daniel? Yeah, so uh, we've got uh, 1,772 uh, languages that have been recorded and are now freely available uh, to people groups that need it. Um, and we are we are on track for uh, for Vision 2033, where we'll be able to um, essentially fulfill our part of the Great Commission by 2033. We trust the Lord to do what He is going to do um, through that and then after that. But uh, as far as as far as our work and our partners' work, we are just aiming to make sure that the Bible is uh, freely available in every language that needs it. That's awesome. I I know that uh, a big part of faith comes by hearing that I didn't understand until I first visited you guys was I just thought Bible translation or printing Bibles was kind of the answer because I assumed I, I'm a reader I read the Bible um, that you know, all you got to do is just print a bunch of Bibles and hand out Bibles to people and they'll they'll have God's Word but that isn't quite necessarily the case for most of the world is it tell me yeah. tell me why the audio Bible is so important yeah, so it is a, a huge need for the majority of the world. I think in the West and especially in America, um, you know, where every household probably has you know half a dozen Bibles laying around, that's not necessarily the case in, in certain parts of the world. And so, there's a couple of numbers I want to share with you that are super important and can help kind of visualize the need. The first one is 70%. So 70% of people alive today. Um, do not have access to scripture in a language or format that they can understand. And the next one is 50%. So 50% of the world um, can't read at a functional level to read the Bi- to understand the Bible, uh, to internalize it. And so we, with those two numbers, there's a great need uh, for audio scripture. So 70% of the world's population lives in an oral culture. Uh, And what that means is that they are either in a community that doesn't have a written language or they're part of a community that uh, prioritizes oral learning and oral communication. And so we want to uh, come alongside these communities and meet their needs uh, through audio Bibles. And so when you are um, when you're hearing the word of God in your heart language, if your heart language is English, for example, you can comprehend it. a little bit more than you can in a second language, maybe a trade language or a language that you've picked up along the way. And so we are really uh, focusing on these uh, audio Bibles uh, so that people can hear the Word of God in the same language that their mother spoke to them when they were a child. Mm. Yeah. When I first got involved with Faith Comes by Hearing, David, you were you were in the you were in the office, and I came with a youth group, and this is just as before I started mm. Summit Church, and you were, you guys had just come out with the original Proclaimer. It was the solar powered audio Bible mm-hmm. that you uploaded MP3s on. And I, I, that was one of the first vid, YouTube videos I think I ever did for ministry back in the day, and uh, and it's come a long way. Now you I got still a po- have it. I have it in the archives. Right, and you've got uh, the pocket proclaimers. You've got the the Bible sticks. You've got all these different ways for people to have digital Bible content if they don't have internet mm-hmm. access and if they don't have power like normal traditional power. Yeah. And um, man, there's so much you just don't think about when you're in the first world you go oh wait no internet oh wait no power Uh oh oh oh, wait i i don't know how to read (laughs) like we just don't have those kind of problems in in america and in the first world especially and so we don't think through uh these issues especially as believers what what do you think um i know you know we're gonna we're gonna talk about the app here in a little while but what do you tell uh, david you were telling us off camera earlier about how um, your founder came up with the idea, it, along with it, maybe a tech person, for that first prototype of the first Proclaimer. That's right. We had uh, been pursuing some kind of tool for years uh, that was, you know, um, solar powered. Uh, we didn't want people to have to spend money on batteries when they're dealing with uh, poverty issues. Right. And so uh, we just. You know, we just had struggles for many years, and then, uh, and then there was a season in the ministry of prayer and fasting, and um, and we just presented that to the Lord, just that need, 
And uh, within two weeks, our ministry uh, engineer came up with the uh, initial prototype of the, of the Proclaimer. Yeah. I've got a picture I'll put on the screen later uh, of their very, very durable a product uh it it was totally melted and then you guys press play and it still worked like yep. <laughs> it was still playing the digital content even though the, the entire case had been melted like yep. it was in a fire or something and that's that says a lot for the quality of the work that you guys put into what you do with bible translation well you want to take our first ad break here and it's for riverside fm uh, I'm a digital content creator. I do this thing with the Jesus Taxi. I have other podcasts, other ministries that I'm that I'm involved with digital content creation. I want you to check out this sponsor of the show, Riverside FM, and consider uh, using my link in the description below to help support the ministry and what we're doing with Riverside FM. Riverside.fm makes it easy to record remote podcasts and video interviews that look and sound like they were recorded in a million dollar studio. Riverside was founded in 2020 by two brothers, Gideon and Nadav, originally from Amsterdam, now headquartered in Tel Aviv, Israel. Those of us that are digital creators and podcasters know that content is king. Content is our thoughts, opinions, and ideas. You can change the world with content. The mission of Riverside.fm is to empower creators and businesses to tell their stories and to amplify their voices. Start creating your own podcasts and digital content with Riverside.fm using my link in the description below. We're excited to see the new media landscape and the emerging content and voices that share everything from news and cultural commentary to spirituality and mindfulness. Again, check out Riverside.fm using my link in the description below. All right, we're back with the Jesus Taxi. I'm in the taxi with Daniel and David from Faith Comes by Hearing. And we're talking about the digital proclaimer, the solar Bible is what I called it. And uh, it's, it's something where you could take the Bible where there's no internet access, there's no power, and with the power of the sun and an mp3 player you can take the gospel to people who don't even know how to read uh to to hear god's word in their heart language so tell me a little bit more about the ministry yeah so uh so i you know i talked a little bit about the idea of of audio scripture and having that available so what is and you mentioned the proclaimer so if we've got you know the gospel of luke recorded how do we get that to people? Uh, the first thing, like you said, is our proclaimer. And we have multiple sizes for that that meet different needs. Um, so the full-size proclaimer that you're mentioning, that can that can reach an entire listening group. So um, several dozen members of a community can come together, listen to God's word, uh, and then discuss it. Uh, we also have uh, a mid-size proclaimer and a mini proclaimer, and those just uh, have d- uh, different, different um uses and so we also have the bible stick yeah which is essentially you know it's a little mp3 it's it's smaller than a phone now you can put the earbuds in and and listen to the the word of god while you work while you work out while you while you're walking to and from things Um, and so these are just great uh, products that we can use to get the word of god out there to people who need it and uh, some other things that we we do we have our global bible apps and so uh, you mentioned about the portability of the proclaimers and the the solar panel and the battery and how that opens up access to people who may not be able to listen to the Bible otherwise. Right. Uh, the global Bible apps takes that a step further, and this is really something that that came about uh, through the pandemic, as uh, communities and nations were closing uh, and quarantining and, and having lockdowns. Um, God's word w- could not be stopped, and 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 the Holy Spirit moved through that time, and uh, we developed. A single language Bible apps. So these are um, apps that you can download on the Google Play Store and store on your phone. Um, they use very little data, and so in areas where people have limited data on their phones or data is more expensive, this is a way for them to have the Word of God on their phone in their heart language. And one thing that we've done with this is that we've been able to um, pinpoint where the need is greatest. So for example, um, during the invasion of Ukraine uh, last year, um, people were fleeing to nearby countries as refugees, um, their entire lives uprooted. And, and we were able to um, serve ads in those countries with their, their language uh, and so that they were able to download the Bible, 
in the language that they uh, understand the most and and get comfort and and peace from God through that and we do we do that sort of thing all over the world um, and we also have uh, something called the gospel films and so gospel films are high quality word for word um, films of the gospels and so those are available in multiple languages as well so communities can come together and see the word of God um, yeah. That's awesome. Yeah. I took some pictures today, so I'll yeah. put some of that For up sure. on the screen uh, while while you're talking. Um, I, I found out uh, earlier that you're also a pastor yeah. in a local church. Tell me about your <laughs> congregation and, and who they are, where your church is, what's the name of your church, and yeah. what, what you do there. For sure. So uh, I am uh, one of uh, four uh, pastor elders at Rio Church, cool. which is in Albuquerque's historic Old Town area. Oh, cool. Um, and so we... Uh, a primarily uh, millennial church. We have about 40 people that attend now. Uh, and I like to say, you know, we have four people from our church that work at the ministry. And so uh, I like to brag around the building that 10% of our popul- of our congregation um, is completely bought into the, the mission of, of, of Vision 2033 and they work alongside me. That's beautiful. Uh, yeah. That's so. awesome. <laughs> so uh, I, I am also a pastor of a mm-hmm. local church and this podcast is sponsored by Summit Church of mm-hmm. Douglas County. I want to tell you, if you don't have a good local church, you're watching this from the Denver metro area, check out Summit Church in Sedalia. What do you look for in a good church? A loving spiritual family? Life-giving messages that help you draw closer to God? A place to raise your kids with moral values, a place to connect, a place to protect, and a place to grow. You can find all this and more at Summit Church of Douglas County in Sedalia, Colorado. Summit Church isn't a perfect church, but it's a loving spiritual family nestled in the foothills of the Rocky Mountains in Sedalia. Come join us for an in-person worship at 1030 a.m. Mountain Time at 4240 North Perry Park Road in Sedalia, Colorado, 80135. Or join us live on our Facebook page at facebook.com forward slash Summit Church Sedalia. For more information about our ministry, visit mysummitchurch.com. Do you want to start a relationship with God? Visit 29minutes.org and learn more about how to have a friendship with Jesus Christ. All right, we're here in Albuquerque with Daniel and David from Faith Comes By Hearing. We're right near a park where they, I guess they have used to play football and take youth group and all kinds of stuff. And we've been talking about Bible translation. We've been talking about audio Bible and sharing the gospel with the world and getting it out there. Tell me about the um, recording groups that go out. You're like 50 different teams that go out and translate the Bible into, into different heart languages. Tell, tell me about that a little bit. Sure. Yeah, so we are... We've got two focuses within our ministry. The first and, and probably um, primary focus that we've been doing for many, many years is recording the Word of God. Um, and so we will take uh, written uh, translations of Scripture and we'll, uh, we'll work with partners and with local um, community members as well as our recording teams uh, to go out into the field and record that written Scripture into audio so that there is um, a way for people who are non-literate uh, or who prefer um, oral learning to be able to hear the Word of God that way. Yeah. The other side of it is uh, it's a relatively new uh, field called Oral Bible Translation, or OBT for short. And Oral Bi- Bible Translation has really been a, a work of God uh, among our ministry and among our partner ministries to accelerate um, the fulfillment of, of this Vision 2033. And so the way Oral Bible Translation works is if you're in a community that does not have a written language, it can take it can take decades for a traditional written Bible translation to develop and then be accessible among that community. Oral Bible translation speeds up that process um, and, and we will utilize um, somebody who speaks the, the heart language that, that wants to be translated, somebody who speaks the trade language, and we'll work together uh, with a various um, different people to make sure that the Bible is translated accurately and faithfully. So it, it maintains the same rigorous standards that any written Bible translation would uh, would go through. And uh, we work with partners around the world, including um, you know historical Bible translation organizations like Wycliffe, uh, Pioneer Bible Translators, uh, Biblica, American Bible Society, all kinds of organizations to uh, to come alongside this, this vision to make sure that the Word of God is accessible to those who need it. 
That's beautiful. That's wonderful. So uh, earlier we were in what I call I call it the war room of, uh, <laughs> of your ministry, where you can play uh, you know testimonies of people who have read the Bible, who have been listening to the Bible, who got the Bible in their heart language, and and then you, you at this map on the wall you show dots of all over the world where the Bible is being listened to or translated, or you your ministry has some kind of touch with the people that are involved on the ground with those tribal groups in those villages in those cities in those towns and it's just so inspiring to see and I you know I got a lot of friends and family here in the southwest that you know either coming through uh, New Mexico going somewhere else or you you're looking for a vacation spot or you want to you want to you know just see something different and do something for the kingdom man I really highly recommend you come down to Albuquerque and get the tour and see what faith comes by hearing is all about it's so inspiring to see and to think about these millions of people whose lives are transformed by the Bible and so um, I'll put up a, a picture of what the, your headquarters looks like because I took a picture of it earlier and I just highly recommend this they say seeing is believing or a picture is worth a thousand words when you guys can come and see the headquarters and what people are doing there and what they're working on and then you have so many tech oriented people like web oriented people met one of your documentary filmmakers who's working on it. I saw some of his work in the film you showed me I'm like man these guys are incredible you've got you've got some openings I think in the ministry right yeah yeah thank you so much for the kind words we God has really blessed our ministry with with talented people um, who are seeking to utilize those talents for the kingdom uh, for an internal impact um, you know I like I like to think about it this way you know in marketing we can be selling a product right um, but we as a, a marketing team at this ministry are privileged to sell um, not sell but to promote rather the ultimate gift right the gift of, of God's goodness and grace mm -hmm. um, and so for me that is a worthy endeavor and if you're looking for uh, for an opportunity to get into ministry or maybe you're already in ministry and God is kind of guiding your path towards a different type of ministry. We do have a few openings. Uh, you can visit faithcomesbyhearing.com. You can go to our uh, Get Involved section and, and look there and see if something fits your skill set and your passions. Um, but yeah, we, we really have been blessed by the people God has brought to us. Yeah. So you guys need, you need people that can code mm -hmm. apps. You need people that can do, um, creative people that can do voiceovers for Bible translation, especially if you're bilingual or you speak a certain heart language in a language that you, you haven't translated into yet. Um, you do dramatic portrayals of the Bible with, with uh, sound effects and soundtracks and it's unbelievable. Like just the sheer amount of content you guys have is incredible and those of us who are podcast or digital creators we know that content is king and you can't find any richer or better content than god's word like it truly is life-changing it's a living book so yeah. what do you any thoughts back there david on just i know you've been doing this for what 30 years said Faith Comes? I uh, just celebrated 35 years. So what keeps you working at Faith Comes By uh, Hearing? It's the Word of God. You know, it's uh, it's a sure foundation. And um, God knows the plans that He has for us. And the generational life today, if you think about it, um, with all these things uh, coming about, with the technology, the knowledge, the understanding, the unity, I mean... Could we actually accomplish the Great Commission in our lifetime? And so that's uh, humbling. That's a great responsibility. And uh, and so I want to you know spend my time in the Word. I want to encourage people to hide God's Word in their heart. And uh, you know listen to the Bible, folks. If uh, if you struggle with reading efforts, um, listen to the Bible. You'd uh, be amazed at how much you could accomplish so quickly. If you listen 28 minutes a day for 40 days. You could listen to the entire New Testament. How about that? That's amazing. And so um, I just want to encourage you to hide God's Word in your heart. That's so good. You know, I, what, I, one thing I say as a pastor all the time is, you don't read your Bible. Your Bible reads you. <laughs> because when I look into God's perfect Word, 
I see the reflection of Jesus, and then I start seeing who I am, and I start going, oh, I got a little schmutz right there. Oh, that's not quite like Jesus, is it? Oh, I'm behaving in a way that doesn't really align very much with what the word. Oh, Lord, help me to be the man, to be the dad, to be the husband, to be the pastor that you want me to be. And none of us are perfect. We all get it wrong sometimes. We all feel like failures, but guess what? We know the perfect one. And maybe you've watched this episode of the Jesus Taxi. You're like, well, I don't read the Bible. The Bible's kind of a dusty, boring book. No, no. You're boring and dusty. <laughs> that's the problem. You, you haven't seen the mystery that's within the pages of God's living word. It's the most exciting book of all time. It's a reason why it's the international bestseller every single year ever since publishing started. Back to the Gutenberg Press. There's no Bible that's more purchased, more shared, more read widely than any other document in the entire planet. It's because it's God's living word. Well, maybe you, you, you watch this today and you're like, oh, I, don't, I, I want to know Jesus. This is a Jesus Taxi show. This is kind of crazy. What's this show about? I am in love with Jesus. And I want you to love Jesus the way I love Jesus. And I have a little patch here on my jacket. that I, This is how I share the gospel with kids. It's called the gospel in colors. And each of these colors, it's, it's black, red, white, blue, green, and gold. And what is black? Black represents sin. What's a sin? Sin is anything that separates me from God. It's the good I leave left undone, or the, the evil I know I shouldn't do, but I just go ahead and do it anyway. You know, that I, I feel guilty when I sin. And that's why a lot of people avoid Christians, or they avoid church, or they avoid Christian music, or they're like, ah, I feel guilty. Like, I've invited people to church, and sometimes they go, Pastor, I'd go to your church, but if I came, the roof would cave in. Like, <laughs> no, no, God loves you. God loves you. He, he made provision for my sin and your sin. And what does the, this red represent? The red represents blood. The Bible says without the shedding of blood, there's no forgiveness of sins. You can shed your own blood. Plenty of people shed their own blood because of their own sinful mistakes and problems. But, you know, Jesus had perfect blood. His blood was the atoning sacrifice for all of our sin. He made provision so our sins could not only be covered but be be forgiven and cleansed completely. And that's what the white stands for is purity, holiness, the righteousness of God, the atoning sacrifice. Jesus made a way for us to have our sins forgiven and for us to be declared righteous by the love of God. And does that happen automatically? A lot of people, well, thank you, Jesus. <laughs> and then just go live on your life however you want. No, it doesn't happen automatically. It happens by faith. And that's what the blue represents. You ever heard of a true blue friend? Well, Jesus wants to be your true blue friend. You could also think about this is, is like the waters of baptism. He said, repent and be baptized, every one of you, for the forgiveness of your sins. There's something about finally surrendering to God's will and saying, Jesus, I put my faith in you. I want your blood to be the cleansing sacrifice on behalf of my sin. And when, when that happens, he gives me a new life. That's what the green represents. He fills me with his Holy Spirit. I'm given a new nature. The things I used to want to do, I don't want to do anymore. Suddenly I want to pray. Suddenly I want to be around other Christians. Suddenly I start want to listen to God's word and do what it says. It's amazing. And when the Holy Spirit comes in, he begins to change. He gives new life. And if all that weren't enough, the final patch here is gold. I have a home forever in heaven where the streets are paved with gold. Jesus has made a way not only for me to have a friendship with God right now in this life, but I'll have a home forever with him in heaven. And that's why the Bible is so important. We want everyone everywhere to know how much God loves them and what Jesus has done on our behalf. Well, I have another patch here. It's STP. And some, some people see that as a racing patch, you know, scientifically treated petroleum. That's not what it means to me. It means sorry, thank you, please. That's how you start the relationship with Jesus. You say sorry, thank you, please. You want to start that friendship with him right now? Pray this prayer with me, right wherever you are. Just stop what you're doing. If you're doing the dishes, just put it down for a second. If you're walking, just create a holy moment between you and God right now and pray this prayer. Say, Dear Jesus, I'm sorry for my sin. Thank you for dying on the cross for me. I believe God raised you from the dead. 
according to the scriptures. Please come into my heart, be my Savior, and be my Lord. In Jesus' name, amen. That's why the Bible, right? That's why you guys do what you do. Any any thoughts on Jesus, you know, as we wrap this up here today? Yeah, I mean, Jesus changed my life. Um, it's clear he's changed yours and David's as well. And and having that, that knowledge and that relationship, how can we not want to share that with the rest of the world? Yeah. Um, faith comes by hearing, is committed to um, providing the pure word of God to people who need it around the world in a language that they can understand and access That's awesome. and uh, invite you guys um, to, to go to our website faithcomesbyhearing.com learn more about what we do um, read the stories of life change and see how you can get involved um, download our Bible app bible.is um, and listen to the word of God and ask God to speak through that and, uh, and he will change your life and, and direct you in the way you need to go Awesome. Man, you guys are amazing. I've had a great time with you today. And thanks for giving me so much of your time and giving me the tour and talking about Jesus. And we're so excited for this ministry. So check out faithcomesbyhearing.com and check out more of the Jesus Taxi Show as we film throughout this week in the next 12 days in season two of the Jesus Taxi. Hey everybody, thank you so much for watching the Jesus Taxi Show today. The Jesus Taxi is a proud outreach of Summit Church of Castle Rock, Colorado. Go to mysummitchurch.com and press the donate button to support the ministry financially. If you want to do that, you can also do it by text. It doesn't cost anything, no fee for it. If you text the amount of your gift to this number, 303-625-9434, and then press send, Follow the prompts using your smartphone, and 100% of what you give by text will go to the ministry. You can also mail your gift the old-fashioned way. Just write a check and mail it to this address, Summit Church, 200 South Wilcox Street, Box 243, Castle Rock, Colorado, 80104. And we'll see you next time on the show. Remember, God loves you. He loved you so much that he sent Jesus and he, he's there with you in your ups and downs. So share this link with a friend and we'll see you next time on the Jesus Taxi Show.